And we start with the troubling story of a newborn boy taken from his parents at four weeks old. With multiple broken bones, Seattle medical experts determined he was the victim of child abuse. But a judge ruled those who had examined the boy made a mistake. The Spotlight's A.J. Janabelle explains how, instead of saving a family, they nearly destroyed it. Look, King. Ready? Set? Moments to cherish. Because any parent knows they fly by in the blink of an eye. Going up. And Casey Sigmund has already missed out on Ooh. so much of her son's life. They took away basically a year of a bond that I could have had with him. This is Kane, Casey's only son. He's coming up on two years old, and he keeps his family very busy. Kane, what are you doing? <laughs> but for months, Casey's home was much quieter. It felt horrifying, like, how could I be a monster? Born in May 2021, Kane was a fussy baby. So much so that Casey took him to the doctor several times. Pediatricians waved away her concerns until a bruise appeared on Kane's leg at four weeks old. Further examination at Seattle Children's Hospital revealed a fracture, then another and another. They did a full body x-ray and found broken bones in his ribs and his legs and his arms. For Dr. Elena Feldman, the child abuse pediatrician on call, these were classic metaphyseal lesions, or CMLs, the result of a twisting or pulling force to the extremities. And per her training, CMLs are considered very specific for child abuse. It no longer went from what can we do for Kane, it's what happened to Kane, what did you do to Kane? In her report on Kane, Feldman says she reached that determination only after ruling out other possible causes. Casey's family history was flagged. Maternal great-grandmother reportedly had easily broken bones. So Dr. Feldman checked for low bone density or rickets. But Kane's bone labs and x-rays did not show any evidence. Feldman also ruled out a genetic disorder, OI, osteogenesis imperfecta, commonly known as brittle bone disease, because Kane's fracture pattern is not consistent with fractures seen with OI. Two days later, she gave her findings. Kane's injuries are most concerning for non-accidental trauma. In other words, child abuse. Kane was turned over to Child Protective Services. His family was subjected to a police investigation. And then they let me know they were taking Kane into custody. And that I would have to leave him at the hospital. And that if I tried to take him before the social worker got there, I would be charged with kidnapping. Hi. A Department of Children, Youth, and Family Services social worker snapped this picture of Kane when they took him into custody alone in his crib, his left arm and both legs in casts. The next time his mom would see her baby boy would be at arranged visits, strictly supervised by social workers, continually documented and only for a few hours at a time. This went on for nine months. I missed all the milestones. If Casey wanted her son back, DCYF said she'd have to undergo very strict and deeply personal evaluations, education courses, and drug screens. She did it all. Doing the infant class, doing the toddler classes, agreeing to UAs, agreeing to mental health evaluations. I wanted to do it as soon as I could. So I didn't want to push it out any further, so I knew if there was something that they could tell me I have to do, I wanted it to be done. And through it all, staying positive, focusing on getting her family back together, knowing she never hurt her son. One of the things I was asking all the time is, when am I allowed to take him to another doctor for a second opinion? When are we going to x-ray his bones again? And then when are my services going to reflect on him coming home? She tells me she never got a straight answer from DCYF, but in a child abuse trial, Casey knew she wouldn't win back Kane without evidence to the contrary. So this mom went to find it herself. A court-appointed legal team started examining the case history. So I started requesting all the discs of x-rays. I got all of his paperwork that showed the labs that have been run. Since I wasn't allowed to get any more run, I got everything that had been done. And I sent that off to the other doctors for opinions. Since I couldn't physically be allowed to bring my son in, I got his history. 
It didn't take long for cracks to appear in Dr. Feldman's diagnosis. Casey's lawyers found blood work had been done on Kane a month after DCYF took him, showing he had a genetic variance associated with brittle bone disease and other skeletal problems. Tests from the hospital the day they brought Kane in showed issues with his vitamin D and calcium absorption levels. The lawyers found more relatives who reported having brittle bone disease. And they learned his mom took an antidepressant during pregnancy, which has a deterring effect on bone formation in embryos. Casey's lawyers also shared their discoveries with outside experts, including Dr. Marvin Miller, a professor of OBGYN and pediatrics, and a clinical geneticist at Dayton Children's Hospital in Ohio. Miller stated, the diagnosis of child abuse has been made by an overzealous child abuse pediatrician who discounted and disregarded the totality of findings. I reached out to Dr. Feldman as well as DCYF to speak on this case as well as those expert opinions. After several attempts, Dr. Feldman's office told me that she is unavailable and DCYF, instead of giving me the chance to speak to them on camera, provided a statement that reads in part, the ultimate decision to remove children from their home is made by law enforcement or the court. The department looks to reunify children with their families when it is safe to do so and continues to provide information to the court to consider. Yet, when Casey, who is now nine months pregnant, finally petitioned the court for Kane's return late in March of 2022, DCYF fought to keep him in foster care. A few weeks later, in a shocking move, Social workers put Casey's newborn daughter, Zoe, in protective custody, too, owing to Kane's still unexplained injuries. I was blown away. Like, how can this keep happening? How can a judge sign off on that? I reached out to my attorney and said I just gave birth and I was served with papers a couple hours later. This whirlwind series of events culminated in a hearing in Grays Harbor County Superior Court where the judge described by the family's attorney as visibly upset sided with Casey, ordering an immediate return of both children over the DCYF's continued objections. Something new had convinced the judge to reunite the family on top of Casey's fact-finding mission. All along, the core of the agency's argument in keeping Kane was he was safe. While Kane was in DCYF care, he never had any injuries. But it turns out he had. In an irrefutable twist of fate, the same kind of mystery injuries that took Kane away from Casey returned. A routine physical done on Kane found four unexplained rib fractures suffered while he was in DCYF care. Remember, this is when his family still had limited access to him and their visits were supervised. They said that me and the foster mom and the daycare were all going to be investigated. And then when they couldn't piece together any story because nobody broke Kane's bones. Then it just disappeared. Nobody talked about it again. The judge's final order was explicit. There were no findings of abuse or neglect, and DCYF was not timely in giving the parents the opportunity to get a second medical opinion. Wow! Kane is back home with his mom, making memories. But Casey knows she'll never be able to get that time back. She oh. says the state stole. We have a bond now, but that baby time, all gone. She tells me another thing that's gone is her trust. And now I'm left scared to take my kids to the doctor. Scared at who's knocking on the door. Well, bless her heart. I mean, I don't blame her for being scared. But AJ, how is Kane doing tonight? Well, David, when I was talking to Casey, I got to spend some time with Kane, and he's a toddler. He's happy. He doesn't really know all the specifics of this just tragic situation that he has been through for the last several months but one thing that is concerning is one of the experts a geneticist has a worry that Kane may face juvenile osteoporosis later in life oh, I'm just glad he's back with his mom though AJ how many families are investigated for child abuse like this it's pretty surprising we have numbers from 2017 that says 37 percent of United States families will face a situation like this and they're usually low-income families uh, families who are black or Latino families. Well, the idea is to protect kids, right? But how many of those are actually substantiated? When you look at a case that came out of New York City, they said only 20 to 30 percent of those investigations were substantiated. Well, a lot of people are going to be reacting to your story tonight, and we're all glad that those kids are back with their mom. But please keep us updated on any developments in this case. Of course.